Hey, it's Andrew Duarte with MariaDB, and you have probably heard about the recent vulnerability that was found in Log4j, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how it works or how you can test your applications. So I'm going to create a new project here from scratch, just so that you understand uh, what is the... Uh, uh, the vulnerability that we're talking about. So I'm going to use this uh, quick start archetype. Let's call this log4j vulnerable app. And I'm going to leave this as is. But you know what? I'm going to remove everything here that we don't need so we don't get distracted. And I'm going to use um, Java. 17 let's remove these all right i think that that's fine so first we need to get the uh dependency log 4 j dependency and these two 2.16 and 2.5 they don't have the problem they have fixed the issue in these versions but if you are using 2.14.1 or earlier then you're going to be affected and i'll show you what, what it means if for some reason you cannot just scan your projects, then uh, I'm going to show you how to test any system uh, by using uh, an online tool that I found. So, okay, let's refresh this project here so we can use the, uh, the library. And uh, I think I removed JUnit, so I have to remove that. Um, test and let's format this in a more Java standard way. Actually, I can use this, let's say, what's your name? And this could be like a web page or something different that has maybe a text field inside, but we're going to use the console here just so we don't have to use any uh, frameworks or anything. So I'm going to use a scanner attached to system.in, scanner.nextline, and this is the name, right? Maybe the application then says system.out.println, low, plus the name, right? Like I said, this could be a web application, so it creates a, maybe a web page or something, and then you get in the server, assuming this was a server, you get uh, in a variable somehow the, the value in the text field for the name. And then you return maybe uh, a response, a JSON object, or a new uh, just um, HTML document, or whatever it is, with the message that includes the name in this case. But oftentimes you want to log the name, for example. So let's create private static final logger from log4j log equals logger, logger, I think it's log uh, manager or something like that. Yeah, log manager dot get logger, that should work. And before printing the, the output, we probably want to log something, info, uh, name introduced, right? And this is gonna be just uh, um, um, showing whatever the user introduced in, uh, in the input. And that's the problem because the user has total uh, freedom of use any any values. We are not uh, validating here anything. And there's a possibility to inject something malicious that when log log4j um, kind of parses this string, it's going to call something. And let me first show you that this works. In fact, we need first to configure Apache log4j. Yeah, I forgot that. So in the um, log4j website, you'll find a configuration page here. And I found just some minutes ago that there is an example of a configuration file, very simple one that we can use. And of course we need a new directory here with the name resources, a new file with the name um, log4j2.xml. And let's say we want to use uh, probably info here and there. All right, so let's try this application. 
So it's asking for my name and to do something. And then you see the log first, name introduced, and then the output of the application. Fine, right? Uh, the problem with this is that, like I said, we can introduce a malicious uh, input there, a string. So I found this tool, log for shell that hunters.com. I'm going to leave a, a link to this uh, website in the comments of this uh, or in the uh, description of, of this video. And if we use that string that's shown there, let me run this again. This string is going to contact that LDAP server. Uh, there's an error there, but it doesn't matter. And you can see it was able to do so. And the problem with this is that this LDAP server could have returned something malicious, like a Java class that has a static block with code and then run whatever the attacker wants to run. So that's that's the problem with this. Now, in order to patch this or to, to avoid this problem, you have to update here to 16.02.16.2. Uh, it's the latest version at the time of uh, this, uh, recording this video. And so if we do it again, paste the same, we won't get, I'm going to refresh this, we don't get any new entries here, so it's not contacting this LDAP um, server anymore, and it, it's safe. So, all right, so that's how you can test your services, REST services, web applications in general, actually Java applications in general for this vulnerability, or to check whether you are using Log4Shell or Log4J, uh, a vulnerable version of it. So I hope it, it, um, it was useful. Uh, remember that you can contact me uh, at programmingbrain.com. So you'll find there some uh, option to contact me if you want. If you want to tell me about a topic that you want me to talk or, or whatever, or just to say hi, uh, feel free to, to, to drop me any messages through this form. I'll be happy to, to, um, to reply to it, all right? So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.